here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. All right, welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here. Of course, uh, we try to cover everything that's going on in the gun world. Just got back from the SHOT Show, a lot of things going on there. And one of the big buzz items that people are talking about, because it happened just before SHOT Show, was the announcement that Barrett, the iconic American firearms company, has been purchased by a foreign entity. Oh, my God, people are losing their minds about this. It is incredible what is being posted online. And I looked at it and said, wait. That's Rob. I know Rob. Let's get him on the show. Rob Nyer, if you will. And Rob, I know I'm saying it wrong because I'm not Australian and you are. So welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks very much, Tom. No, I think you did very well. No, you, got it, you got it right. <laughs> All right. So I caught you. You're uh, basically on the backside of SHOT Show. You're still in the States. You're over in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is where Barrett is located. Before we talk about plans for Barrett, I'm going to give you the floor because a lot of people don't know you and don't know your background. Why don't you start with that of who you are, how you got into this, and what you're currently doing in your companies before you bought Barrett? Yeah, thanks, Tom. No, it's good, and uh, of course, I've, I've known you over the, the last couple of decades. We're not near to the gun industry. Uh, we're based in Australia. Family business started in the uh, yeah, very modest beginnings. 50 years uh, this year we're celebrating being in the gun industry. Wow. And uh, the the start of it was a, a retail gun shop. Well, caught, well, really hard to say a whole retail gun shop. It was a, a retail rack of guns in a gas station mm-hmm. in a country town in in Australia, started by my dad. You know, we, we built the business uh, over the 50 years, slowly and steadily, uh, but always completely uh, focused on, you know, the mission there, which is we know that shooters always want guns. We love guns and ammo. That's what we do. We sold guns from that retail environment uh, and then eventually into wholesale. We're the largest wholesaler of sporting firearms in Australia and New Zealand. And then we, we grew over a period of time and got into the government business. And I can talk to you a little bit about what we're, we're doing in that uh, area as well, if that's of interest. Well, absolutely, because I'm I, doing my research. I knew about you being a, a major distributor. I mean, if you people understand here, you know, you're the, the Lipsies or the Davidsons or whatever of, of Australia. But I had no idea how extensive you are now into military armament, all the way up to and including missiles, right? Yeah. So, you know, on the, on the distributor side, certainly our relationships, you know, with companies like Leopold, Federal, Remington, Ruger, you know, all of those uh, brands, which people be very, very familiar uh, with, you know, goes back a, a very, very long time. What we did, no big surprise to people, that we had uh, a lot of problems back in the 90s in Australia sure. uh, with gun laws and a lot of restrictions and, and things. And we made a, a commitment, my dad and I, then, that no matter how hard anyone made it to sell firearms and, and ammunition, if there was only ever going to be one company left in Australia, it would be us. So the way we secured that to make sure that we were always there and always able to support uh, you know, Australian shooters, was we diversified the business to, to de-risk that single point of potential failure for us. So we diversified into law enforcement initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, I led that area of the business and then eventually into military. And uh, we've grown now to be the largest supplier of weapons uh, and munitions to the Australian Department of Defence. And uh, recently we moved into New Zealand and a significant supplier of munitions there. But as you say, the range of products that we're supplying. Uh, essentially, we're staying, we stay true to guns and ammo, but the ammunition is bigger on the military side. So uh, we've got framework contracts. We represent the Winchester's Lake City ammunition plant, so the U.S. government-owned ammunition plant uh, at Lake City there. We represent that small arms ammunition oh. into the Australian military. But we go right up to Northrop Grumman, you know, 120 mil tank ammunition, and then we're doing 155 mil artillery ammunition, mortars, we work with a bunch of American companies. And then we formed the Australian Missile Corporation because, you know, whilst everyone is certainly focused on the conflict in Ukraine, and rightly so, we in our area of the world have a shared issue with the U.S. military, and that is the uh, rising tensions in the Asia-Pacific, uh, particularly around China. Sure. And so Australia and the U.S. need more missiles. And our mission down there, we've been contracted by the Australian government to help 
fast track the establishment of guided weapons, you know, missile production in Australia. Uh-huh. And we also operate some of the Australian government ammunition factory uh, down there, quite a large portion of that factory, more in the, the larger calibre type uh-huh. thing. Okay. Well, let's switch around to Barrett, which is, you know, truly an iconic yeah. name in firearms. Uh, everybody knows it for the fifty caliber, but also make other guns. They've got, you know, three hundred eight, if you will, five five six uh, rifles. And, of course, m- maybe even more so, it's iconic for the stance that Ronnie Barrett and crew took when they said, you know what, if you're not going to allow citizens to buy our guns, then we're not going to sell them to your, your police in your state. And there was a rousing cheer. And then, of course, and you know, you just saw it. Uh, people said, oh, my gosh, Australian bought this. You know, of course, you can't own guns in Australia, which is always one of the funnier things that I hear here. And then they said, well, you know, what's he going to do with all of that? So what are you going to do with Barrett? So firstly, we've we got plenty of guns in Australia. We just can't have all the guns we want, all the types of guns we want. Right. Uh, but our job is to make sure we can have as many as we, you know, as we can. I love Ronnie's stance, and I love uh, what he stands for. That leadership in, in industry, you know, I want to make sure we continue that type of leadership. So just to put that particular issue to bed, uh, you'll recall, I think what you're sort of referring to there is uh, Ronnie pop, uh, put out a letter, he published a letter, I think uh, in particular around the California right. um, issue there. Um, so what I've done is one of my first orders of business here in the first week was to reaffirm the company's stance in relation to Ronnie's uh, position. And so and we've published uh, my uh, note to the uh, internal management here, we published that on social media this week, uh, saying that we have re- that we reaffirm uh, Ronnie's position and uh, the company's position. So we have faced and we will continue to face all sorts of uh, attacks from whether it's governments or, in fact, companies uh, attacking the gun industry and and licensed firearm owners and. As a leader in the industry, we are we will always have to stand up against that. So this is, you know, this is business as usual okay. for us. This is nothing, un, you know, nothing new. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been in decades of fights and uh, not afraid of that at all. Excellent. Uh, people are going to really be glad about that. So, what's the plan for Barrett? Where are we going to keep making everything? Are we expanding? What are you going to do with it? Yeah, well, the first thing is uh, it's an incredible brand, an incredible product. And what makes it that is the people here in Murfreesboro, which are making an unbelievable product. It is, and we're so proud to have, you know, to be able to, to do this. And Ronnie has been so good to me and Chris Barrett. You know, they've just been so good. Uh, our two families have worked together for a long time. He's been such a great, you know, great help to us and really encouraging. But we are going to make sure that uh, nothing changes in the quality of the product. Nothing changes in the uh, you know where these products are manufactured. Our hope and aspiration over a period of time is that we will expand the production facilities here in Murfreesboro. Now it's a very this product is not an easy thing to make, and they make everything in house. I mean they're out there you know building triggers and you know welding and doing it's a craftsman made product. Ah. This is you know genuinely deep, heavy you know hard manufacturing and craftsman stuff. So this is not a commodity product. So. It's going to take us a while to try and maybe build some more capacity. There's a lot of demand here, but we will want to grow the business over a period of time. But we will do it respectfully, and we will do it in a steady fashion. Uh, It will be the same quality that we've always had out of Murfreesboro by the same people. Fabulous. All right, so then the other question that I have is I'm looking at all the things you're doing in Australia and in New Zealand, and literally it's a, a worldwide operation, and now you just bought this American company. You going to do anything more in the U.S.? You looking at any other possible acquisitions? Well, we're, we're not looking at uh, acquisitions uh, or you know immediate acquisitions, but we have an appetite for growth. When it comes to guns, Barrett is going to be our entry point, and um, our intention is to be here for a very, very long time. We're, I said we're celebrating the 50 years of our company. My vision is to create a 100-year family business. You know, I really look up to and admire those companies that have been able to remain a family business for that period of time. So that is our aspiration. Um, and we, you know, so we're here for the long haul. We will certainly look for growth and, and we will do it uh, with a very long-term view. So we'll, we're happy to invest more and more in the U.S. market. 
Rob, that is really encouraging to everybody here to hear that you know you're going to support the brand and grow the brand. Yeah, you know, I just wanted people to know. I mean, as you say, I've known you for decades, and I wanted people to know. Okay, who is this guy? He's a real gun guy. He's a real serious gun rights guy. Even though you don't have the Second Amendment in Australia, you've been fighting the fight there for decades now. And I just wanted people to know, you know, that yeah. it's going to be okay. Well, Tom, it'll be more than okay. It'll be exciting. Um, and I can t- tell you one thing, that the people here at this factory, I just wish everyone could meet someone that worked here because they are an exceptional group of people. And, uh, you know, I-, I know what we're going to be able to do with them, um, but we'll do it in a steady in a steady way. But they are just fantastic people. And the quality, we just could not be prouder of the association we've got with the, you know, this particular product and what it stands for and uh, and the quality of product coming out of this factory and the people we've got here. It's a, it's a hell of a formula. And uh, we'll make sure that we give it the support it needs to grow respectfully in, in the direction that it can. That is all good news, Rob. Rob Naya, thank you so much for spending time. Thank you for letting us know what's going on. And I am very encouraged about the longevity of the Barrett brand and who knows what comes after that. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Good, ca- good catching up. Absolutely. All right. Don't go far. Gun Talk will be right back. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. Gun Talk. 